Hey guys, what is up? My name is Jimmy and welcome to my new video. So in this video, what I'll be doing is covering some exporting settings in Adobe Lightroom 5. Now even though I am showing you these in Lightroom 5, the same process will apply to previous versions as well as versions that come after Lightroom 5. So no matter what version you have, you should be able to follow along fairly easily. So what I'll be covering in this video include the exporting settings, so just the basic settings that I use and I recommend people use. And then I'll also cover how to export for both full resolution as well as for the internet. And then I'll also go over how to create some presets for these. So let's jump right into it. The first thing that you need to do is bring up the exporting box. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this. The first way and the way that I use is just right click on the photo, go to export and then export right there. However, another way is to go up to file, export, or as you can see there, you can press control shift E and the box will pop up right here. So you don't have to really worry about this stuff on the left hand side or up the top here, just make sure it's on hard drive and uh, let's jump right into the boxes down here. So the first category you can see here is export location. So obviously this is where you can choose where to export your photos to. Uh, so this first box up here is letting you choose specific folder, choose folder later which is useful for presets and same folder as original photo. Now me, I usually choose specific folders since I like being able to choose exactly where my photos end up. But if you want all of your photos in the same place as your raw files, uh, then probably choose this one here and that way they'll all stay in the exact same folder. Um, but me, I'm going to pick specific folder. Now moving down to the next part, you can see the current folder which is selected is just the desktop. So what you can do then is click choose and you can choose kind of desktop downloads or you can make a folder in your photos like I do here. Um, but usually if I'm working on one shoot, I just like to keep it on my desktop temporarily. And the best way I've found to do this is choose desktop here and then check put in subfolder. And then what you can do then is change this to whatever you want and it'll automatically create a folder on your desktop. So for me, I'll just keep it at full resolution as it is there. Um, so existing files, ask what to do, choose a new name, overwrite or skip. I would recommend keeping it always on ask what to do and that way if you do already have a file with the same name there it's going to ask you to choose a new name or if you want to skip it or override it instead of just doing one without any warning. Okay now moving down to the file naming tab you can see you can just uncheck this box here which will keep it as the exact original file name. Otherwise if you check this box and go down this list here you can see you have a few different options so you can choose a file name, the file name and then a sequence which will be a number. Uh, a date and then the file name, the custom name, a custom name in a sequence and so on and so forth. Otherwise you can click edit here and then choose from a whole list and you can customize your file names from there. For me I just keep it as the file name since I don't export too many photos from Lightroom directly I usually do some editing in Photoshop and then export them from there. Okay so moving down to video we don't need to worry about that and moving down to file settings. Now this is where you have complete control over the format of your file, the quality, and all the color settings and stuff like that. So the first box we have here is image format. So you can choose to export it as a JPEG, which I would recommend. Um, otherwise you can choose PSD, TIFF, DNG, or original. Now I would just recommend keeping it as JPEG. Quality you want to keep as 100 if you're exporting for full resolution. And color space, sRGB is fine. Okay, so moving down to image sizing. Um, I'll go over this in just a moment, but this is the tab here where you can pretty much choose what dimensions you want your photo to export at. Um, if you just uncheck it there, it'll export at the original and it won't try and resize it at all. Um, now moving down to output sharpening, I'd recommend keeping this unchecked. Um, now the reason for this is you'll generally do as much sharpening as you want while editing your photo and you don't want Lightroom adding extra sharpening uh, on top of that. Um, because then it could make your photo look over sharpened and that's definitely not a good look. Um, now metadata, all metadata, I would probably recommend keeping that checked. And what this means is if you right click on your photo and go to properties, it'll tell you every single bit of information about your photo. So this will include um, the camera and the lens it was shot with, the date and time, um, all of your camera settings and everything like that. Now if you don't want anyone knowing about this, then probably just put copyright only and it'll have your name if you've put that into your camera. Um, however, I always keep it on and that way it shows metadata on sites such as Flickr as well as DeviantArt. Um, so watermarking, I generally do mine in Photoshop, so don't worry about that unless you want to do that. 
and then post processing so after export you can choose to open the file in explorer open in photoshop or other applications but generally just keep it off so after we've worked out all of our settings that we just have here this is going to be a pretty good way to export for full resolution so what we can do then is make a preset for our exporting so we can go back to this whenever we want so to do that we go down here and press the add button and preset name will say full resolution and apologies about my extremely clicky keyboard and then folder we want to keep it in user presets and press OK and then you can see it's appeared down here so what we can do now is just press export and you'll see up here it's saying it's exported and now it's completed and if we go to our desktop you can see the folder has been created here and if we bring this over here is our photo in full resolution so you can see the quality is absolutely fantastic um, now let's move on to exporting to a website so bringing back Lightroom here what we want to do is right click on our photo again but if you also want to export more than one photo you can either press ctrl A to select all of them or hold ctrl and click to select certain photos um, so whichever photos you have selected will be exported at the same time so what we want to do now is right click and then go down to export and you can see this export with previous button here if you click that and then click skip you can see it's also going to automatically uh, render out all of your other photos that you have selected with the exact same settings that you just exported previously um, so that's also a good way if you finish a photo you can just export with previous say be going through the whole menu again okay what we want to do now is go back into our exporting menu and this time we're going to export for our website so what we can do now is change put in subfolder to website or low resolution or whatever you like and moving down we can just skip most of these since we don't need to worry about them now okay so moving down to file settings this is where you can control the overall quality now the lower you bring the slider the smaller your file size but also less information is going to be in your JPEG file um, usually for a website I keep it at 100 still but you don't really need to do that and you can probably bring it down to about 80 before you start noticing it too much um, so for me I'll just bring it to 90 and uh, that should be fairly good right there now this is where image sizing is going to come in handy obviously you don't need to upload your full resolution files to your website um, unless your website is displaying really big photos and in that case uh, feel free to do that but on my website the images are fairly small and if I were to upload full resolution files um, it would either be too big to upload or it will just take way too long to load um, so this is where resize to fit is going to come in handy now if you click on this drop down menu here you can choose from a few different options I generally recommend using long edge now you can see one of those boxes has disappeared and we've only got control over one value here now what this value means is uh, it's automatically going to resize the short edge depending on what you choose for your long edge so for my website I think the minimum is 1500 pixels across or it might be 1000 um, but for me I'm going to choose 1500 pixels on the long edge and that way it's automatically going to resize the shorter edge so it keeps the exact same aspect ratio what we can do now is go over to our resolution box and you want to change this from 300 to 72 now the reason for that is most monitors people say can't see over 72 pixels per inch now some people disagree and I'm sure there's some monitors out there like some newer high resolution monitors that can display more than that but for most people probably their monitors won't display more than 72 pixels per inch or they won't notice if it is displaying over that um, so you can keep it at that or you can raise it a bit higher if you want um, but 72 ppi should be fine other than that everything is totally fine and we can add another preset down here and call this website export and click create now you can see if we just go up to the top here and we flick between these two you can see the settings are all changing uh, so yeah now we have these two different presets here and we shouldn't need to ever change anything else in our Adobe Lightroom export settings and we should just be able to rely on these two presets for everything so choosing website export let's just press export and it should be a bit quicker this time since the files are a lot smaller opening this folder up here you can see we have all of them that are resized to 1500 pixels on the longest edge now just showing you metadata if we right click and go to properties then go to details 
You can see going down here, you can see I shot it on a Canon. You can see the exact model, the exact settings. And you can also see the exact date and time that I shot this. So I shot this on the 10th of December at 6.32 at night. Okay, so thank you very much guys for watching. I hope this answered a few questions which I've been getting lately. And uh, that's pretty much the exporting settings I use for Facebook, my website, and just keeping the full resolution files on my computer. So thank you very much for watching guys. I hope this helped answer any questions that you had. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button to help my channel out and you can subscribe for future videos. If you do have any ideas for future videos, be sure to leave them in the comments down below. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.